shoot the bad guys. Do we have to shoot anybody? They're shooting at us. How goofy. When I'm the pilot, we're not going to shoot anybody. Ow! What's wrong? My ankle. Come on, let's go to the barn. Joey. I love it. Come on, let's dance. It's your folks. There's been an accident. The shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. Come on, you try. No, I don't want to. Come on. No, I don't know how. Just hold on to it. You've seen me do it a hundred times. Just hold it here. Put your arm back. That's it. Oof. If we catch something, we're throwing it back. Hey, we got something, babe. What? Oh, my God. Clear, wait, wait, pull it in. No, I don't want to. Pull it in. Oh. What is that? Will you? Oh, you know I will. <laughs> A little more love? A lot less muscle, right? <laughs> Here, you need this. Muscle. I have the distinguished honor of presenting the President of the United States. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked 
by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Did you hear? Let's go crazy. Take care of my girl till I get back. gave it to me over 40 years ago. Got me through some tough times. I think it's time you had it to strengthen you. I remember this. Take care of yourself. Thanks, Grandpa. Dear Claire, I received your photo today. Funny what you think about when you're so far from home. God, I miss fixing planes with you and holding you close. I'll bring your picture with me. Tomorrow we're going out again. Lights out. I love you, Joe. Germany should put it 9,000 feet by 0800. 9,000 feet? The drone's gonna be like kicking a hornet's nest and having nowhere to run. Yeah, we got our backs, isn't that right, Gunner? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this, fellas. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noise of pestilence. She shall. Let's go, fellas. Elevators. Elevator check. And we're on.
missing in action, Claire. It was announced in San Francisco half an hour ago by a high American official not identified as saying that Germany has surrendered unconditionally to the Allies. No strings attached. Of all the places that you've been, oh, ain't it good to be back home? Be back home. Of all the places that you've seen, oh, ain't it good to be back home? Be back home. And for those warm embraces, we've got plenty. Welcome home, Ray. So nice to see you. Congratulations on getting engaged. Come on in. Just such a surprise. So nice to see you. Let's just doing the dishes. Excuse me. Oh, please come in and sit down. You, you look so well, Ray. Thank you. Gee, it's great to see you, Claire. <laughs> it's about Joe. I thought you would have known long before now. I saw Joe's plane go down. I know. It went down two years ago. Just waiting for him. He made it. There were a lot of shoots, Claire. When you're counting from so far away, everyone just hopes all the guys got out. One of the guys couldn't jump. Joe was trying to save him. All the survivors are POWs now, so they're just starting to put the pieces together. There's a letter coming. Joe's my friend. I wanted to tell you first. Claire, if there's anything I can do, anything at all. Oh my goodness, look at me. I have no manners. I didn't even ask you if you wanted a tea or anything. Would you like some? Claire, if you here. Honey, you're, you're gonna be okay. okay. Day, hmm? Yeah. I was looking through the advertisements for work. I thought maybe I could help you down at the hangar instead. Hmm. Well, there's not much going on down there, but I'd be grateful for the company. Of course, I couldn't pay you much. too hot, I just go outside for a spell and sit under the shade. Grandpa, what's happened? Well, when the war broke out, everybody who could fly went overseas. I told them about a month ago to shut all this down. So how are you supposed to run a business when you can't even have a phone or electricity? <laughs> There's not much business left to run. Why didn't you say something? Because you had troubles of your own. 
no sense in both of us worrying about that. Well, there's only one thing we can do. We're just going to have to find some new business. Well, I've tried. <laughs> there's not anything around here. Well, we'll just have to go somewhere else and bring it in here. That was Tanner crop dusting. I talked to them a year ago. No business there. Well, that was a year ago. He just bought five PT-17s from government surplus, and he wants us to do the conversion. Well, well, well. We'll find out where he bought them. We might get some parts from old Uncle Sam. Been uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. What about? Maybe you ought to find something else to do. Why am I doing something wrong? No, no, nothing like that. Just that maybe this is not the right place for you. This is where I want to be. You're my family. Honey. Maggie and Ray are starting their own family. And the prettiest girl in Boone City is, <laughs> is, is cleaning blow-by oil off a steerman. It doesn't make any sense. I like it. Why are you doing this? Because there's more to life than fixing airplanes and having dinner every night with an old man. Oh, I hope Ray doesn't mind I spent so much, but this was so precious. Oh, hey. Hello. Hi, honey. Hey. So, Maggie, you got any money left for lunch, or is it back to washing dishes in the back? Oh, Ray, I'm very frugal. I don't worry, kids. Lunch is on me. Oh, well, what am I going to nice. have? <laughs> Excuse me. Great! <laughs> what a surprise! How you been? Swell, I'm swell. Me too. What a surprise to see. What are you doing in Boone City? I'm on my way to Sacramento. Joe lives here. Joe Kelly? I was going to try to look him up. Well, he's dead. You knew that. I didn't know that. When did he die? In the crash with you. He was trying no, to... No, Ray. Joe didn't die in the crash. I even saw him a year later. <laughs> oh, hi. I'm sorry. This Maggie. This is Pete, Joe's co-pilot. How do you do? Hi. He says Joe might still be alive. What about Claire? Joe's Claire? Yeah, Pete. You're going to have to tell her what you just told me. Of course. This is good news, right? Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey. Claire, this is Pete. It's Doug. Hi. Hi. Nice hey, to meet nice to meet you. Hello. Have a seat. Claire, I was Joe's co-pilot. I was in the plane that went down. And there's been a mistake. Joe didn't die in the crash. We were all picked up by German patrols and put in separate POW camps. But then I saw him a year later. He was in the back of a truck with some guards. I yelled to him. I don't know if he heard me. Are you sure? Yes. You think that he might still be alive? He was the last time I saw him. I'm sorry. Could you excuse me for a moment? Claire. Claire, wait. <laughs> I know that Joe is out there. I can feel it. I, I have to think. I'm sorry. I 
buried Joe once. I can't bury him again. Well, I just have to know what happened to him. What does it take, Claire? Do you have to find a gravestone in Europe to be sure? If, if Joe was alive, he'd be with us right now. I have work to do. Chambers for seeing me. Yes. Well, Doug tells me that you're looking for your husband who went down on a B-24 somewhere in Germany. Is that right? Yes, sir, it is. Well, why would you come here? The official report says that your husband was killed when he went down with his airplane. Because at the funeral, all we did was bury dog tags. Couldn't there be some sort of mistake? Now, I know it says nobody was found, but I know lots of reports like that. Joe Kelly is buried somewhere in Europe. Now, I don't want to sound hard-hearted, but that's happened to a lot of families. I know someone who saw him a year after he supposedly died. Could he be in a military hospital or anything? Young lady, if Joe Kelly had let himself be known, we would have contacted you. What if he was injured so badly that he doesn't? Listen, Claire, Joe Kelly's a hero. Because of him, most of his crew survived. Unfortunately, it looks like he wasn't one of them. Now, you can go in there and check for yourself if you'd like, but it's tough in there, even if you do it on a daily basis. I need to. Shot down in 43. I don't know much. I... It's interesting. I spent quite a bit of time in German hospitals. We may have crossed paths, particularly if he was badly injured. And then when I was released from hospital, they sent me to Stalag Luft One. That was the only real facility they had to handle any of us that still had medical problems. I have to tell you, I don't remember the name Joe Kelly. Of course, I can steer you in the right direction. Now, don't get your hopes up too much, but this Will Martin fella, he did know everybody, everybody knew him. He's quite a card. I think you're going to enjoy him. He's at a small airfield just before you get to Harris. Thank you. <laughs> Until then, keep your hat on, honey. All right. 
Excuse me, is this William Martin's business? Who wants to know? I do. Oh, I'm Will Martin. I'm gonna help you, beautiful. Oh, good. Casanova's back. The village is safe again. Don't mind, Jeannie. She flunked out of charm school. <laughs> she punched the instructor. I did. I'm sorry. I was just wondering if I could have a moment of your time. I'm sure you're busy, but... I'm not too busy for you. Come on in my office. Excuse me. Thank you very much for your time. I've just been to the VA. Chaplain Bain says that you were in Stalaglyph 1 during the war. Yeah, I was. Did you happen to know a Captain Joe Kelly while you were there? No, didn't know. If he was there, I'd have known. Tommy's got that part. He's going to stop off and get something to eat. He was wondering if uh, he should pick up something for you. Uh, no. I might have plans. OK. Bill, honey, take a seat. So uh, should we go get something? We could uh, continue to talk? No, actually, I I'm sorry. I, I don't have time. I have to go. Thank you for your time. You should get some food with your friend. Did you tell Handsome he can eat by himself? <laughs> yes, I did. Good girl. Excuse me. Hey, Bill. Come on in. What? Any see? I'll be with you right away. Oh, no, I, I don't want to eat. I, I think I need a garage. I've overheated my car. Oh, well, Chester's the only one left. It's a couple of miles out on the highway. Well, I don't think my car can drive that far. There's no other mechanics in town? Oh, no, there's only one garage. Now, there's plenty of fellas around here that can fix things. I mean, the best mechanic in town's sitting right over there. Toby went out to his truck. He forgot his wallet again. Oh, there. Hey, Tommy! This young gal needs your help. That this usually happens after you eat the meatloaf. Oh, quiet, Everett. Tommy, why don't you go check on her car and I'll give her something to eat. Where's your car, ma'am? It's outside out there. Joe. Joe. Mike, steak and eggs. That'll help. No, are you sure you want to do that, Ruby? She still looks a little shaky to me. Good morning, you Everett. I need to help him. No, no. You need to eat. Now, he knows what he's doing. He'll take good care of your car. I gotta give him my keys. What? What's that? Oh, you got me. Fine. 
You sure you're okay? I've just been driving all day. I'm really tired. Can I get your keys? Oh, sure. I think they're in the car. What was your name again? Tommy. Did you turn it over? Man. Got pretty hot. I fixed the hose, but uh could damage the engine pretty good. Can you fix it? I'd, I'd like to. Sorry. What was your name? Claire. Kelly. Claire. Yeah, it's just my partner and I. We, we've got a lot of work to do and we've got this huge deadline coming up. But uh Chester will be able to take care of you. You from around here? Ben City. Well, I won't get you to there, but uh, you keep some water in it. Get you around town for a few days. Just uh, take it on over to Chester. He's real good. He'll fix it up all right for you. Can I pay for your trip? Oh, there's no trouble at all, ma'am. Tommy, thank you for, thank you. It's my pleasure, Claire. I'm over at the airfield if you need anything else. I'm sure I'll see you around. Are you from here? No. Remember not to drive too far with your car like that. Find a better mechanic within a hundred miles of here. He was nice. Yeah. He and Will Martin owned the airfield on the way into town. That one with the B-24 in it? Yeah, that's the one. Well, Kara got a job at the hospital. Oh, God. Hey, eat up. How's your car, hon? Well, it won't be making it to Boone City. Is there a motel or anything like that around? Oh, my, my sister has a boarding house just down the street, and it's very close to the nice restaurants in town. <laughs> Want to think about it? Just get off the bus? Of course you did, silly. Yeah, I miss my mom. She's working today. Well, when is she not? Hello. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you later. Bye, Shirley. All right, bye. Here. Oh. Why didn't you call? I didn't want you to talk me out of it. <laughs> hey, everybody! Sherry's home! Hi! Hi, Hi Everett! Hi, Everett. My daughter! Come on, excuse us. Here, babe. You look older. Mom, you saw me last Easter. Well, why are you back so soon? I don't know. I was worried about you, I guess. What about school? I'll finish next semester. How about that boy you were seeing, the one with the funny name? <laughs> Percy. Percy. <laughs> He's all right. He knows this is something I have to do. I'm not a charity case, you know? <laughs> I forgot to bring it last time. Mom, we haven't talked about Stephen since he was killed. Is that why you came back? Yes. And the fact that you can't keep a waitress here for more than a week. I have to get ready for the 
in a rush. Now, you just go fresh and hop in. You give me a hand later. You look beautiful. I'll, I'll have your check right away. Slayton's boarding house. Harris, I, I could get there by morning if left right now. No, 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 wait. Something's wrong with him. He, he doesn't know who I am. Oh, my God. I'll call Colonel Chambers and see what I should do. I'll call you in the morning. Okay? All right. I'll wait to hear from you. Okay, I love you, Grandpa. Claire. I'm so glad you're here. We'll see what this doctor has to say. Well, he doesn't know. Doctor, this is Claire and William Kelly. They were referred by Colonel Chambers. Thanks for seeing us. Joe's grandfather. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, please sit. Sit. Dr. Kessler, we're here to find out what happened to my grandson. Well, um, Claire told me on the phone that he doesn't remember her, and um, he's answering to another name. Outside of this personality shift, is he showing any other outward signs of mental instability? Right, well, without an examination, all we have is guesses. But um, it is possible that uh, blunt force trauma to the head or severe shock could cause a condition called dissociative identity disorder. It can be caused by physical, chemical, or psychological aberrations, so no two cases are alike. Hell, it's pretty fascinating, really. We've seen a lot more cases ever since the war. Doctor, as fascinating as it is to you, we're talking about my grandson and Claire's husband. Can we take him home? No, sir, I don't think you can. Without letting the mind heal on its own time. Now, he can be capable of living a normal life, as impaired as it may seem. It's not a normal life. He's living as another person. Well, the shock to his existing environment could be very damaging. In fact, I think we're lucky that seeing you, Miss Kelly, didn't damage him further. What do you mean, damage him further? Look, I, um, I realize you're very excited about having found Joe, but you have to resist trying to remind him of who he was, rather, who he is. Look, Mr. Kelly, I'm gonna shoot it to you straight. Having seen Claire, seeing you might just cause him to shut down. Damn it, what are we supposed to do? Just sit by while he builds another life for himself? No, no, of course not. Um, Claire, he saw you, did he react at all? Well, you stay near him. Maybe as, um, his mind heals, he'll be able to accept the memory of her. Love is a very strong force. I've seen it keep soldiers alive on the battlefield when they shouldn't have a chance in hell. Alone? Yes. It's your best bet. 